So next we have a presentation from Vulcan Energy Resources with the ticker code VUL, a company focused on its zero carbon lithium project with a market cap in excess of $1 billion. Unfortunately, the MD, founder and CEO, Dr. Francis Vidin, is unable to join us live today. However, I'll now bring up a recording of his presentation from yesterday. Good morning, everyone. My name is Francis Vidin, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Vulcan Energy Resources, um, the world's first integrated zero carbon lithium and renewable energy company. Um, this presentation is available on our website, so I'll take the disclaimer as read. Um, please have a look at it. Uh, so just uh, as a, a summary of the company, um, Vulcan is aiming to produce lithium chemicals, so lithium hydroxide and renewable energy, so geothermal heat and power from the same resource, which is a uh, geothermal brine resource rich in lithium uh, in the Upper Rhine Valley in southwest Germany. So we're aiming to produce renewable energy and lithium chemicals um, from Europe for the European market. Just a couple of points as to why this is right place, right time um, for this type of business in Europe. So Europe is basically the fastest growing lithium market in the world, an unprecedented build out of the lithium ion battery industry in Europe to um, service the um, auto industry, which is rapidly transitioning to electric. And Europe is entirely reliant on imports of lithium chemicals. Um, you think Russian gas is bad? Well, that's roughly 40% reliance. When it comes to China, we're talking 80 to 90% reliance for um, lithium chemicals for Europe. Um, but in addition to that, the European automakers uh, who are um, aiming to source lithium in much larger numbers over the, over the coming years, they also want to source uh, um, ethical, sustainable, um, and ideally zero carbon lithium as well. So. Volkswagen was the first to say this. They said um, they will uh, treat sustainability on par with price when purchasing raw materials for their batteries. The others have all essentially followed suit now. Um, so this is a list of our customers here and what they're saying, essentially sustainability is on par with price um, uh, in, as, as a, a purchasing metric. And that's important for lithium because lithium as it's produced currently, particularly from hard rock, is um, very carbon intensive. So 15 tons CO2 per ton uh, lithium hydroxide produced. Um, in addition to that, we have the, the energy crisis in Europe currently. So um, with the very tragic events in Ukraine, um, Germany and Europe's reliance on Russian gas is being highlighted. And what we do as well is produce geothermal energy. We're actually doing this right now. We, we are a commercial geothermal energy producer. Um, and geothermal has a unique advantage in being able to wean Germany off Russian gas. Um, so really right place, right time for lithium and for geothermal energy. And this is all being driven um, by regulation, um, both uh, from the EU for zero carbon batteries, um, but also um, uh, from uh, uh, um, studies in, um, in Germany, commissioned by the German government to essentially get Germany to zero carbon electricity. So the new German government uh, has brought forward the targets to um, make Germany zero carbon as well. Um, so really right place, right time in terms of regulation, right place, right time in terms of the, the market for what we're doing. Here's a bit of a snapshot for what it looks like. Um, so we really fit into the, uh, the European circular economy. So we have this sort of hub and spoke model. So the hub of the wheel is this central lithium plant that we'll be building at Herx, the chemical park just outside of Frankfurt. The spokes of the wheel, these um, geothermal and direct lithium extraction projects. Um, that we'll be building around um, the Upper Rhine Valley. And these will be feeding the central lithium plant with lithium chloride concentrate. Um, so you can see here we pump up the hot brine to the surface, we extract the lithium and the energy from the brine, and then we re-inject the brine back into the reservoir. And this um, fits well into the um, European ideal of a circular economy. The lithium can then be recycled um, eventually once the batteries reach the end of their lives. And we're also providing renewable heating and renewable power to local communities. Um, the way we started, we looked for where this could be done geologically. Um, the Upper Rhine Valley in Germany is one of the only places in the world that has the geological characteristics where such a zero carbon lithium project can be done. We have the renewable heat, the high lithium grades and the high brine flow rate potential. Um, it's also a very mature exploration area. It's been explored for decades for oil and gas and for geothermal. So um, this has given us a head start in terms of data and we've already um, we've already defined a resource of over 15 million tonnes LCE, which makes it easily the largest lithium resource in Europe. 
That's just off three of our licenses. We have 11 licenses um, across the Upper Rhine Valley at the moment. And so we're looking at really growing this resource further. But the point here is scale is not an issue for us. We can scale up with the market um, as demand grows, um, as this very large demand grows in the European market. And you can see the bulk of the demand is really coming from Germany, where we are. Um, this is how the project works. So pumping the hot brine up to the surface, producing energy from this brine. And this thing gets fed into the grid um, as heat or power. Heating is more advantageous, um, but we can do power as well. Um, and then this gets uh, the brine, the cool brine gets fed to a direct lithium extraction plant. Here we use commercially available technologies. This is not an R&D project. We use a technology called absorption, which has been used commercially in the lithium industry since 1996 to take the lithium out of the brine using the heat from the geothermal. Um, that's very important. So we don't use any fossil fuels here. The brine then gets re-injected back into the reservoir. We then send the lithium chloride to lithium hydroxide plant and we use green power to produce the lithium hydroxide. Throughout this process, our footprint is net zero carbon. It's actually net negative, uh, but we call it the zero carbon lithium project. Um, we have some very um, uh, um, accomplished um, partners along the way. So on the absorption side, we're working with DuPont. On the central lithium plant side, Nobium, um, formerly part of Axo Nobel, one of the largest chloralkali producers in Europe. We, all, but we also have a very strong team of in-house experts for each stage. So we're not outsourcing any of this technology to third parties. The IP is in-house, um, unique to Vulcan. This is a schematic of how the project works. So once again, the hub and the spokes of the wheel. Um, you can see we have uh, two geothermal plants which are already operating, um, which will be expanding. Um, so these will be the source of some of the first um, lithium brine that we're, um, uh, that we're processing to extract the lithium from. And then we aim to build out a series of more geothermal plants across the Upper Rhine Valley in a phased manner. Um, these metrics, these CapEx figures that you see, these are based off our pre-feasibility study. These will change. This was over a year ago now, in January last year. Um, so obviously markets are moving a bit since then, but also the, uh, the size of the project is increasing. So we are looking to increase our production capacity from this 40,000 tonnes that we had in the pre-feasibility study. Um, and this comes from some of our newly granted licenses across the Upper Rhine Valley as we step out from these existing operating zones. So really stepping out from um, a central part where we have existing wells from a producing part of the field and really aiming to step out sort of north and south of that to increase production. Um, you can see our existing, so we own this plant 100%. This is our geothermal renewable energy plant at Insheim. This will be part of the first production. We'll grow this plant. Um, nearby, we have Landau, which is a plant where we have a brine offtake agreement with the operator. We aim to grow this plant as well, and this will be part of the first production. And then we'll step out from there north and south to increase our geothermal production and our lithium production. Um, the technology that we use, as I said, has been used um, by Livent since 1996. Um, Rio Tinto and Eremeta also going down the absorption route as well. Um, there's obviously a lot of hyper and DLE, but a lot of them are effectively R&D projects with um, uh, novel technologies. Absorption is an established technology and is the best, best technology to use um, where you have the heat freely available to drive the extraction process because the, the process effectively needs heat. So you can either use gas or in our case, you can use geothermal energy to drive this extraction. We have a fully functional laboratory um, in Karlsruhe in the Upper Rhine Valley. Um, this has full analytical capability. This is working with our pilot plant, which has been operating successfully for over a year now. Um, we also have a demonstration plant, which is under construction. Um, and that will be, um, first part of the construction will be completed uh, middle of the year and we'll uh, build out the, um, the later stages towards the end of the year, the electrolysis part. Um, so um, effectively, pilot plant is already um, demonstrated, uh, plus 90% um, recoveries, and the demonstration plant will be a, a learning tool in a pre-commercial setting for our um, uh, lithium extraction and lithium processing teams. We will have two sources of revenue. We already have revenue from renewable energy uh, production. We're one of the only uh, pure play renewable energy producers on the ASX at the moment. Um, we're aiming to increase this, particularly for heating, which is really in demand at the moment. Heating is the elephant in the room in terms of decarbonisation. Um, uh, but obviously, the majority of the revenue comes from the lithium chemicals side of the business. Um, we've seen a lot of hyper and spot prices. Um, we take a more conservative long term view, probably um, somewhere in the 20s. So we can revise this assumption a bit um, upwards. Um, but nonetheless, um, important to note that spot prices go up and down, but contract prices over the long term are much more stable. Um, we've just executed our first heat offtake agreement. So with 
um, Germany's largest municipal energy supplier, M5 Power. Um, so we will be supplying uh, heat, renewable heats to the city of Mannheim um, from our Mannheim license. And this is a very important enabler for our uh, energy and lithium projects. We've executed binding uh, lithium hydroxide offtake agreements with Volkswagen, Stellantis, Renault Group, LG Energy Solution, and Umicore. We are fully sold out for our lithium production for the first five years of production um, to really blue chip customers in Europe. These are not MOUs. Um, these are not non-binding term sheets. These are fully binding lithium hydroxide take up bay offtake agreements. Um, and this is really important for financing our project, which will be the next stage after the DFS is completed. Um, we should be one of the lowest cost opera operations out there um, because we're able to use that freely available heat. These figures will be updated in our DFS, which is ongoing currently, as will these figures, um, but we can see very attractive metrics with much lower lithium price assumptions, you know, January last year um, compared to now. So there's significant upside there. Um, BNP Paribas was appointed as financial advisor, so they're helping us with our bankability study. You can see this is our long-term price assumption um, used in the PFS. Um, really long-term price assumptions have gone up significantly since then, that contract price is up there. So a lot of upside there. Um, a lot of risks in the project. Um, I can't go through them all line by line. I don't have the time, but we are um, taking steps to control these, but important for investors to be cognizant. There is there's technical risk, there's permitting risk, et cetera. Um, so we're working on that, and I think we're in good progress. Um, part of what we do, um, really everything that we do is, is related to environmental, social, and government, so-called ESG. Um, and it's about how we tell that story um, and how we show investors and stakeholders that um, uh, what we're doing has a material decarbonizing effect on the supply chain. You can see relative to hard rock, material um, decarbonizing effect here, effectively negative three tons CO2 per ton lithium hydroxide produced. Um, importantly, very small land footprint as well, which for Europe is really critical indeed. Um, I'll skip over this because I don't have the time, but just to say that we have a very strong team, both on the board, um, and in the leadership team, um, around about 120 uh, employees now will be um, about 300 by the end of the year. That's certainly the target. So um, uh, really strong expertise in the fields of geothermal energy and lithium extraction, some of the world's leading experts technically. Um, and uh, we have expertise across the battery and auto industries as well. Um, so Vulcan is really building out a one-stop shop in-house. We also have drill rigs as well. Um, which we've bought 100% in-house. Um, so a complete geothermal energy and lithium production solution. Um, just finally, I'll, I'll just finish off um, looking ahead. So uh, we're completing our phase one DFS at the moment, um, and that is on track to be completed in the second half of this year. We'll be undertaking a financing for phase one thereafter. Um, then there'll be, um, with this, there'll be an updated PFS for phase two, and then we go into phase two DFS and financing for phase two. So a phase build that approach of our projects across the Upper Rhine Valley. Um, the pilot plant will continue to operate. The demonstration plant will go into operation later this year. Um, in the meantime, obviously, permitting will be ongoing. Um, some key catalysts for us going forward, obviously, the DFS, um, updating those numbers with a much higher lithium price, we, we expect. Um, cost of materials may increase as well. Um, so there should, uh, should be something of a, um, a balancing act there. Um, but we'll also have um, uh, a demonstration plant, which will be up and running, which I think um, will be a key sort of milestone for the company. Um, and more um, heat offtake agreements as well, which are key catalysts for our project, um, potentially strategic investment into the, um, the company and project um, in the months to come as well. We're talking to a number of uh, strategic parties, um, both on the energy side and on the lithium chemical side. Um, that's just a bit of a snapshot of our, our, um, our capital structure there. Strong cash position, um, management's um, very incentivized to make this work, um, and uh, corporate and institutional shareholders make up about 20% of the register, including Hancock prospecting at um, uh, just over 5%. Um, so some really um, uh, quality investors in the project um, and very supportive of us going forward and strong cash position, which puts us in a good position going forward. So just to sum up, so we are a commercial um, uh, a renewable energy uh, operator, generator, albeit um, small scale in the grand scheme of where we want to get to. We want to be a much larger renewable energy producer. Um, we have the rigs to do this in-house. We have Europe's largest lithium resource, very large geothermal and lithium license area. Uh, we have our site for our central lithium plant secured, um, completing our definitive feasibility study at the moment. 
Um, we have the proven ability to raise capital quickly, and we still have a lot of cash from this capital left over, um, which gives us a lot of flexibility. Fully sold out on lithium production and uh, further heat offtakes to come. World's first and only zero carbon lithium project with third party proven um, life cycle assessment re uh, results to, um, to back this up. Very strong team in house, um, very strong technical team um, and corporate team in house. Um, and now dual listed, uh, the first ASX company to be dual listed on the prime standard of the Frank Frankfurt Stock Exchange as well. Um, so we're expecting to see increased um, uh, European investor interest as part of that in the months to come. So thanks very much. Um, it's going to be an exciting uh, few months ahead for Vulcan um, towards that DFS um, and um, plenty of catalysts ahead for the company going forward. Thanks very much. And thank you all for joining uh, that presentation. If you do have any questions for Dr. Francis Bedeen, please feel free to send them through to uh, info at brokerbriefing.com and we will pass those on for you.